Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We've got a little bit left on this thing, a couple of suspension components, and it will be ready for the dyno. And I'm going to show you uh, what parts we got. We had to wait for them for a while for, you know, whatever reason, just mix ups and stuff. But we got stuff from uh, two different companies, and uh, they're really nice stuff. So I'll go over what we got and where, I, where we have started. Okay. So these are all of our parts we've got. Um, this uh, and a roll bar is from Trick Chassis. Trick Chassis. Yeah. So we've got the inner roll bar, we got the pan hard bar, the upper brace that goes over the top of the pan hard bar just for stiffening. And then we've got the adjustable lower control arms I talked to you guys about in the last video where they've got heim joints on both sides. So you just loosen up your, uh, your jam nuts on both sides, turn the bar, make your adjustment, put it all down. And you're ready to go. Uh, this here is from Tick Performance. Let me go this other stuff. They, uh, I don't know if you guys know Tick Performance, but they've got uh, uh, Grub Worm. Uh, it's one of the fastest in the country right now for a H pattern standard transmission car. They're in the sixes now, but um, they actually run this also. Uh, this is the uh, adjustable the, for the front end of where the lower control arms connect. Originally, you just have one hole, which on this part would be the middle hole. You've got two uppers and, and two lower spots. So you've got a left and a right. This is really nice stuff, too. You can see it's all CNC machined. One side's got threads. It does open. And it's just welded. welded down the middle. And then you can opt for these bolts here. These are like a mil spec bolt. And the uh, the threads, like your your heim joint, is going to ride on that shoulder only. So you won't have any threads digging into anything. It's really really nice. I'll get it out of there. So we got two of those mil spec bolts with the deep shoulders. Some Nordlock washers. These are the best washers. Like if you have headers that are leaking, use these suckers. They will not leak. They will not back off. They're only good for like one or two times of tightening, but they, uh, those are really good washers. Kind of expensive, but they come with the kit. You got these little filler pieces. I'll take you over to the, oh, and uh, here's the factory lower control arms I was talking about. Though, where they don't have the adjustment on this side, so. If you did want to make an adjustment, you'd have to take the bolt out, drop it, spin the heim, and put it back in there. That's what's so good about those. You don't have to take them loose. Just all you do is loosen those little nuts on each side. It's got a little spot there for a wrench. But we've kind of already started on uh, this end here. Light going here. So that's about where it'll go. Keep my camera away from the light. But most of the guys, they'll uh, they'll butt this right up against here. Which I might still try to, but the the way this is curved up here, there's no way to unless I guess I could uh, beat that in a little bit. But this way, the way it is now, it's just about perfectly centered with what the uh, old control arm was. So, so yeah, you just cut out a bunch of parts, or not parts, but cut out this part here where it had the hole, and we got to make a notch up here. So we can get that upper bolt in because without a notch you won't have access to that top hole. Then those filler pieces, you know, you can just bring them in here. I'll have to make one probably for up here, but filler piece there, a little little bit of filler piece there. I'll show you what that looks like from the factory. Pretty beefy. But it's gonna be a lot more beefier now with those uh your pockets in there. Yeah, on the other side we just cut it all the way up to the top and then cut it over. I just gotta figure out how we're gonna weld all that stuff together. TIG welding would look really nice but I mean you could get this 
life back in here again. Maybe we could easily take that and then make a fillet plate here. Take that, but getting the TIG up in there is pretty much impossible. So we could mix that. Then we could take down here and on the back side. Or we might just mix everything. I don't know. Just gonna have to play with it and see. I need to do some more sanding up in there. And I got a new sander. It's the best part about working on cars, you get to buy new tools all the time. Some of you guys might already have one of these, but this thing is awesome. You can get into any area. Little air powered guy. It's only 100 bucks. Good old Harbor Freight. Pretty nice. But I'm gonna get to work on that thing and I will keep you filled in. Okay, got the driver's side in. Look at that angle. <laughs> I got it on the top hole right now, but it is in there. I ended up MIG welding all of it. Just much, much faster. Ended up bending in, bending in these areas here. Just bending it in instead of making a filler. Worked really well. And underneath this plate here that I made, there's also more bracing on the inside on both sides so it's not gonna go nowhere but turn out pretty good give her a paint job get to the next side well got the inner roll bar in this thing's looking like it means business got the perch all welded on and then the inner roll bar bolts right to it here Got these welded on. This is what the uh, end links bolt to. And this will sit flat when it's on the ground. That way you got plenty of range of motion when you're going up and down, going down the road. This thing even has room in here. I thought for sure it was gonna touch, but it just fits perfect. It's like it was made for it. <laughs> Let's see, we got the other side done mount for this so and everything's all painted it's all painted silver got our fuel lines mounted back up in there all nice and neat up out of the way they don't hit nothing it is coming together almost got the brake lines all bled out that thing's gonna look good going down the track big old anti roll bar under there Oh yeah, we got the. Uh, this is part of the part of the kit also. Got your brace that goes all the way across to help stiffen this up, and then the adjustable pan hard bar that goes across. Next order of business. Well, other than finishing up on those bricks, will be gotta hook these diodes in. Uh, if you guys don't know what a diode is, it's just basically like a one-way door for electricity. The electricity will flow one way, but not the other. So we're having a back feeding problem with the dominator. Like the, uh, we can turn the fans on, turn the water pump on by the switch panel that is up here. That switch panel right there. Or we were gonna we're gonna have it controlled by the holly also. So we got two different ways we could do it. But when we turn that on, it would backfeed through the holly and turn a bunch of other stuff on. It was acting real weird. So we're gonna use diodes on those three dominator outputs. And I'm also gonna use one of these diodes on the reverse light. So we'll feed power to the dominator for the trans brake. For when he's uh, going in reverse because you have to hit the trans brake to go in reverse so if you just put it in reverse then the reverse light will feed power to the dominator and actuate the trans brake so you can back up but in turn it will not turn on the brake lights when he hits the trans brake at the track it's not a super big deal it's just annoying to me seeing those brake lights come on or the the reverse lights <laughs> 
Well, let's get these brake lines bled out and hook up these diodes. Okay, just like that, the diodes are in. So we've got, well this here is the power to the screen, but this little guy here is a diode inside that shrink wrap. Soldered it to the, both ends of those wires. And then this is the wire coming from the trans brake. And then the green wire here, which runs both ways, that is the reverse light. So when you put it in reverse, that will give power to that wire. Which comes to the green wire, and it'll go into the red wire and give power to the dominator to actuate, actuate the trans brake. But when you push the trans brake button, it will not turn on the reverse lights. So that's a good thing about diodes. They're awesome. Get my light over here. And these are also diodes. And they're just hooked in one way for the uh, the water pump and the engine fans and the intercooler fan or the intercooler pump. So when you turn those on, they won't back feed into the dominator. And it all works. No more back feeding, so. Glad to have that part done. And I'm gonna raise this thing up because I'll show you a little thing we issue we had the other day when we took it for a drive. So here we are again underneath the car. The uh, when we took it for a drive the other day. Uh, this guy right here actually overlapped this bar. You kind of see a little bit of a scratch there, but it overlapped it. And uh, when it released, it sounded like a freaking backfire. It's crazy. I'll uh, put the video in right now. I don't know if you noticed, but when it backfired, you see the, 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 the back tires, both of them puffed up a little bit of smoke, or not smoke, but the sand that was on the ground. They both puffed at the same time because the whole rear end went like pow. But uh, that trick chassis is really cool about it. They said uh, uh, if you're lowered, you know, we got the, the coilover adjustables. And uh, he said if it's lowered, these will touch. And he's real cool about it. He said uh, they make a straight one. They're they're angled down like that because usually the exhaust runs right here. But uh, since we got the exhaust coming out of the front bumpers, uh, he's gonna make us one that just goes straight and it'll go to the factory location instead of this lower spot. So uh, they're real cool about it. They're just gonna trade us out and we gotta send this one back. So good customer service on their part. And I told you we got the brakes bled and he drove it. So it, we know what we got to look for now. We got the trim rings on now. Get the arm up here. Bam. Looking good up there. I made some uh, little struts going across here. Help stiffen the it's kind of loose, you know, without having a little plastic guy running all the way across like they usually do. And we're not, we don't have the the wheel liner or the inner fender liners either, so give that some added strength right there. Gave him a little paint job, both sides. Turned out really good, didn't even, uh, won't even interfere with the wastegates. got a handle on a manual rack which we're definitely going to need this thing is hard to turn now I don't know if it just got dry on the inside or what but I think we're about ready to throw this thing on the dyno
And I'd also like to uh, show you guys this if anybody's interested. It's factory width uh, 63 and 3 quarter, 9 inch for an F body. All you're going to need is the center section, but it's got the housing, it's got the factory F body brakes, or the uh, rotors look really nice. It's got a little bit of surface rest from sitting, but, but both the uh, lower control arms will come with it. That one's a little bit seized, but a little bit of heat will come right loose, no problem. And that's the TRZ uh, in a roll kit. Everything bolts in. These tabs are here already welded onto the diff. So that just bolts to there. That just bolts to there. And then these two end caps will bolt onto those little tabs there. And that just bolts onto where the uh, factory brace went. And then the pan hard bar comes with it too. It's kind of like a little relocation. It puts it farther out. Make way for all the other stuff. But a uh, thousand bucks. Come and get it. Get out of my shop. Some more room on the floor to put more crap <laughs> but yeah i think we're about ready to run this thing this dyno anyways uh, i found a guy uh online let me flip it around here uh, i found a guy online that had my exact dyno and he was really cool he told me you cannot run slicks because they will uh they just the way this design. There's there's two rollers right next to each other. Let me show you. You got those two rollers, and with slicks, he says they will actually deform and come off one of the rollers. So you only got, you know, that little bit of patch instead of having both of them. And he also said you cannot use. Well, you can use a drag radial, but it'll uh, you're good for like one or two runs, and then they just turn into grease. So. I believe him. He says he uh, seemed like a trustworthy guy, and uh, he said he's had his MD250 for a long time, and there's a very specific way to tie him down. He gave me the whole the way of how he ties him down. He said he runs 1,200 horse, 1,300 horse on his all the time. So We are going to try and put uh, Pat's car on here and see what we can come up with. I hope it works. I really do. I spent a lot of money on this day. I don't know if I want it to work. But we did uh, get some street tires. They're kind of funny looking, but they might work. <laughs> Look like some old school. Uh... They're so huge. They're the actual, they're the same width. They're not the same width, but they're the same height. So they might be a little, a little narrower, but still got some, uh, a little bit of cushion to them, so I'm hoping they work. We'll give them a try. I'm kind of excited to see if it'll work. But uh, if they do work, I'll post another video of Dino in the car. Um, it's still not going to go to the potential of this engine, but we'll at least get to see if the Dino is going to work like it's supposed to. So uh, I'm going to leave you guys with this, and uh, uh, I appreciate you guys watching, and we'll see you on the next video. Bye.